Well, hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I bring you this video from the late 1800s in the largest city west of Chicago and north of San Francisco. This is Barkerville. So we are here in British Columbia, Canada. This is the Caribou, the area of the province. And back in the late 1800s had one of the biggest and most impressive gold rushes around. This town of Barkerville was ground central. This is where the gold rush really took hold. It started on the Fraser River, it moved up the Fraser River until they found one of the tributaries that had all the gold coming from it. And here it is, the town of Barkerville, the richest gold find ever. I think it's ever. Actually, literally ever. The richest gold find is right here in the town of Barkerville. We are checking it out today and I'm going to take you around and show you all the sights. Now they say this was the largest city north of San Francisco and west of Chicago because back in the late 1800s when the gold rush was happening here, even the capital city of British Columbia, which was called Fort Victoria back then, only had about 300 people in it. This place had 10,000 miners living here in Barkerville mining that gold back in the late 1800s. Now Barkerville is not a reconstruction of a gold rush town. This is the original town. There are 170 of the original buildings here, all sort of restored, made into this amazing, amazing museum, this walking museum. And it okay. is outstanding walking through here, seeing the history, checking out the old buildings, listening to the stories of the gold rush here, all on Williams Creek. Williams Creek is just over there, which is one of the largest deposits ever found. I shouldn't say largest deposits, it's one of the richest concentrations of gold ever found in the gold rush times. And this is where it all started. Billy Barker, back in 1862, after digging down 52 feet of overburden, finding almost nothing, hit the lead or the pay streak of Williams Creek. Ended up pulling out $600,000 in gold in 1862's value. Today, that would be over $42 million of gold pulled out of Billy Barker's shaft at 52 feet down and started the amazing story of Barkerville. And a recent archeological dig actually right beside the Feeder Royale discovered one of the Baker Mining Company's uh, shafts right underneath the feeder. They were digging right beside it and they found the evidence actually started digging out artifacts from one of the old shafts right there. $42 million of gold found right there. You know, 150 years ago. Look, Dad, it's caribou style mosquito netting, made especially for the caribou. Keeps out even the small ones. Now, one of the best activities to do if you're at Barkerville is definitely to do one of the walking tours of the village, of the town itself. Mrs. Hodgkinson here actually is one of the hosts that takes you on a tour of the town and explains everything to you. Not just the town itself, but the history of the gold rush here in BC and all sorts of awesome facts. So thank you so much for the tour. My pleasure. When a cry goes out across the world, there's gold in Fraser's River! It's followed very quickly by a second cry. Where is Fraser's River? Because the land known in your day as British Columbia is virtually unknown on the world stage. It's not even called British Columbia. It's known as New Caledonia. Now, do you hear the water? That, my friends, is Williams Creek. And upon its discovery, it quickly proves itself to be the most auriferous creek in the history of the gold rush. In fact, even through to your day, this two and a half mile stretch of creek per linear foot still holds a title for the richest pay ever discovered. He digs down to 30 feet, he finds mud. He digs down to 40 feet, more mud. He digs down to 50 feet and he hits bedrock. Anyone who's in mining knows once you hit bedrock, that's it, your mine has nothing to offer. But Billy has been in California. He knows that what they have hit is not bedrock. It is blue lead. Two feet of that hard blue clay are removed and at 52 feet down on Lower Williams Creek on the 17th of August, 1862, Billy Barker hits what is known as the richest pay discovered in the gold rush. 
And if you'd like to learn more about the history of Barkerville and Billy Barker, you'll have to do the walking tour yourself. <laughs> there is so much more to it. So are you off the creek to find yourself some gold? No, I'm down to the uh, blacksmith shop to uh, work there today. Okay, well, that's probably where the best gold is, is mining the miners. <laughs> that's is, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> Good day, sir. Many of the buildings have been set up as museums showing off what happened back in the day. Here's the assay office and you can go in and you can look around at the old scales, the old pictures on the wall. You can see back into the actual assay office where they would actually go and melt down and value gold, melt it into bars, tell the miners what they actually got. And it's all set up with everything, coupels, the furnace, scales, it's amazing. And there are a whole crew of interpreters walking around to help the public learn anything that they might learn about this amazing site. Magistrate Chartres Brew. That's me. Was it a good day in court today? Uh, it was a good day in court. Uh, we had uh, several convictions, which is always nice. But yes, very good. Good day. Good day at the Theatre Royal as well. Big show. Good fun. Excellent. We had a laugh. Well, have a great day, Your Magistrate. And there are many, many interactive displays here and demonstrations. One of my favorite, of course, is the blacksmith. Of course it is. Of course it is. What you guys making today? Fire pokers. Fire pokers going on in there today. Possibly crevicing tools. Mr. O'Connell here, the blacksmith, has invited me in later. He's going to show me how a crevicing tool is made. But that'll be on its own video. And Barkerville does host one of the original stagecoach companies of British Columbia, which is still active today, as you can see coming up the road right now. We have the photography gallery where you too can go down in history as a 1800s gold miner. And no historic gold rush town is complete without a place that you can pan your own gold. So here at the El Dorado, you get to test your luck at finding your own gold. And there are some experts here to teach you if you have never done it before. Natural skin oil gets on there and makes them float. And that's just awful, isn't it? So, rule number one, don't touch the gold. What's the second most important thing about gold, do you think? Nah, I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this. <laughs> I'm talking about a physical copper gold. Gold! We found gold! Absolutely. We struck gold in Barkerville! Oh, there we go. <laughs> now that's what we're talking about. You are in Barkerville. <laughs> this is what Barkerville gold looks like. <laughs> <laughs> 
every pan looks yeah. like that. <laughs> and Barkerville boasts a very, very famous Chinatown. Now, I am no historian. I don't have all my facts. I only have heard a few things. Something about it being the largest Chinatown of the time. Might be one of the earliest Chinatowns or something. I heard that it was also uh, designated as a World UNESCO Heritage Site because of whatever makes it so unique, this Chinatown. I think it was the biggest or largest of the time back in the gold rush days. And of course, you know, the Chinese miners were the, by far the best miners. There's even one story here where the Chinese miners went through the tailings of a claim that was worked out and pulled out more gold from their tailings than they got from the mine originally. And that's because the Chinese miners were so good at what they did. But here is Barkerville's Chinatown. And there are four restaurants on site to fill your tummies while you're walking around learning about this gold rush town. Here is one of the saloons, the coffee saloon. Great place to get out of the weather and enjoy a little bit to eat and drink. And if you want to stay over while you're here, there is one hotel and two antique houses that you can rent for the night or the week if you want. And of course, everywhere you go in town, there are vendors selling all sorts of stuff. Here's the candy shop. Let's check it out. $6,000 a piece. So these will go fairly quickly. It will change your life. <laughs> Wait a minute, right? Uh, just we're so goofy, so forgetful. Oh my goodness. But of course, that does actually mean that uh, at present time, you're all standing on private property. <laughs> so uh, I think you should all kindly shove off. Yeah, get off, off here. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> so can you explain to me how this machine works? Oh, it's a bloody machine, right? This thing's bloody complicated, mate. It's right. utterly complicated. Oh, it takes a great deal of process, yes, a great deal yes, of thinking. Yes. Going. Yeah. No simple physics involved. This is complex This physics. is proper complex, yes. right? This thing operates off the laws of gription and sliptivity. Gription. Right? Yeah, gription, gription, mate. Yeah. Never heard of that before. I've heard of bloody gription. No, I haven't heard of bloody well, gription. Gription's ever. crucial, mate. One of the simple, basic laws of the universe, right? It's the gription what uses the winch that hits the... A drive wheel. So that's what it's called. Yeah. So when the hoisting engine attaches. When the winch. The hoisting engine. The winch. Is this going to be a thing? It might be, yeah. And if you're at Barkerville, you can't miss the show at the Cornish Wheel. It is a must see, and you get to learn all about how these water wheels worked in the old time mining industry. And they are hilarious to watch.
Now we've only given you a glimpse of what happens here at Barkerville. If you want to see the rest for yourself, you're going to have to come visit us here in the interior of beautiful British Columbia, Canada and experience it for yourself. And believe me, it is worth it. And I need to give a very special thank you to James Douglas, yes, THE James Douglas, for giving us special permission to film this video the way we have here in this National Historic Site. Thank you, James, and thank you to the rest of the people here at Barkerville for making this experience so amazing. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me that thumbs up. And if I haven't earned your subscription already, I hope I've earned your subscription now. And a big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of Dan Heard Prospecting. And until the next one, bye. 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 Bye.